Hello and welcome to the big picture. This morning, the army is back in the news. One of the leading newspapers of the country, Indian Express, has published about two army units proceeding to Delhi on January 16th and 17th, which has raised a huge furore in this country. Though the Prime Minister and the Defence Minister have denied the whole story, the story said that it was, a, it was very curious that these two army units had moved towards Delhi without having informed the government. What does it mean? What, is, what, is the, what are the repercussions of such movements? Is the army going to be scrutinized much more closely from onwards? We are asking the question today, were these movements of these two army units a false alarm? To discuss this, I have here with me today Lieutenant General Raj Kadyan, former Deputy Chief of Army Staff, Mr. Vinod Mehta, sorry, Vinod Sharma, political editor of Hindustan Times, and also we will be joined soon by uh, Air Vice Marshal Kapil Kak, as well as Commodore Uday Baskar. Welcome to all of you. Let me first go to uh, General Kadyan. General Kadyan, when you read this uh, story in the morning, what was your first reaction? What was your gut reaction? The story, actually, there are two parts to it. Right. One is the fact that two army units moved, one yes. from Isar, one from Agra, right. that perhaps the journalists must be right. right. Other is the meaning they have tried to draw out of it. Absolutely. The insinuation that, uh, I mean, they, they, they have left they have no not, They have not used the word, they, they have said the C word which they are using is curious and not the other four letter word. But they have left no doubt. Yes. Now that is very unfortunate to cast aspersions on our army's loyalty to the country and also to the army chiefs in some form because he has been in the news for some reasons for the last couple of months is very unfortunate and I think it's very irresponsible. Unless they have something more to the story, I don't know, but it doesn't appear. At least they should have checked it with the army and the government before they actually, they have said that they, they have denied. Checked. But I don't know where, where was the need to create such a sensation. Let me tell you. Yes. I have been part of that strike corps. I commanded that strike corps. Yeah, you said that you commanded uh, this. The Mathura you, the, Corps, the to which both unit, these stations. Both, both, both the units. Yeah, Hisar and Agra. Both. Right, you had commanded. It is a very routine thing for the army to do this kind of exercise. The strike corps is required to mobilize in a very short time. So those procedures are periodically tested. And after all, they moved only one battalion. Only one battalion. question here, uh, uh, General Kadian. The story says that the government was not informed. Is it normal for such for such movements to happen? Is it normal for the for it not the government not to be informed? If the units are moving into civil areas, like yes. if you Delhi, move I mean, the Delhi is the captain. It it is no. They, they were not heading for Delhi. They were moving towards Delhi. Towards Delhi. There. But even in then, the mm. road gets involved, the traffic gets blocked. Absolutely. So it is common for civil administration to be kept informed. Right. Unfortunately, today there are very few training areas left for the army to do. They can't go off the road because everything is under crops. If they go westward from Hisar, then there is a bigger problem. So this was a normal move. This is not the first time that this has been done, and I am sure this is not the last time. Yes, information should have been shared. If this was not shared, that was a fault, and that is where we should have focused. Rather so than drawing... It, the information is something which has to be shared with the government and here the, the, the story uh, claims that it was not shared. I'll, get, I'll come back to Let me go to uh, Commodore Uday Baskar. Uh, uh, Uday Baskar, what was your first reaction? I asked the same question to General Kadian. What was your first reaction when you read this story in the morning? My first reaction, Girish, is that I was startled. You know, when I looked at the way in which this story literally leapt out of page one of a major daily, I was a bit startled and I said, hang on. And when I read it, I said, is this April 1? Is this some kind of a spoof? Obviously, it wasn't. It was written very seriously. And as I kept reading the story and the enormity of this sank in, I was disappointed and I was also very concerned because without quite using the C word, the four lettered C word, there were many innuendos, there were many insinuations. And as I said, I was a bit intrigued and also disappointed saying that even as the Ministry of Defense was issuing the denials and they carried a small box saying that the official spokesman 
had denied this what was the need to run the story in this manner i think it could have been handled in a very different way so as an analyst as someone who's looked at civil military relations i am the first one to say that india civil military relations need a lot of repair there are many areas which are inadequate right but the suggestion without using the word it's a very very nuanced way of writing which i found very curious to be honest and i think it needs repetition that if there is one institution which has been totally professional and apolitical as compared to its peers across the world it's the indian military and there is a lot of hurt today and surprise saying that why did a major national daily run the story in this manner so we will, those were my reactions when i saw this yeah right we will we will we, we, yeah we will come to we will come to the aspect of why the newspaper carried the story but before that let, uh, we are joined uh, now by air vice marshal kapil kak uh, let me go to him uh, so both kadyan and uh, commodore uday baskar what they have said you have heard uh, do you also share the same opinion do you think that this story is you know the uh, defense minister has uh, has said that it is baseless but it's very interesting that in the standing committee meeting today the reports according to the, uh, what the reports say the defense secretary as well as the vice chief of army staff who were present today before the standing committee of defense which incidentally met met today said that the report is highly exaggerated so you know th there is a difference between saying it's baseless and exaggerated no girish firstly uh, we can quibble about the semantics but fundamentally when i read the story right of course startling without doubt but deep down it be and vinod sharma and i have been talking about these events for now almost decade and a half or more the pillars of india when india is wanting to be a world power they are showing signs of shake up there is political neurosis bordering on paranoia the media wants wants trps and you have a great great editor in chief of india who in the novel course of act, uh, events should have just put it on page 9 in a column 2 and 3 full page of the indian express what is the message you're sending to so, india so, so. what is the message you're sending to the world unfortunately the retaliations are cross sectoral something happened some months ago and suddenly you see every issue involving the army is on front page i mean for god's sake give me a break what is happening in india here is we are looking at an india which is a power by example to the whole world Air -wise and it's you behaving saying, like a banana you know, republic absolutely you know but you can't blame the media for highlighting these things because part of it has been uh, uh, the creation of the army itself let, let me come no, to no it's not a creation of the army these the are problems, routine movements the problems, absolutely the problems which have happened in the recent past if because of which the army has been in the limelight is let, let me say this if you are talking about c word 10 times the number of people who were coming from agra and hisar 10 times they are present in new delhi you don't need to get one little you know <laughs> infantry regiment when you have well, nearly I'll, two and a half uh, brigades here yeah. I'll, i'll come to uh, general kadyan later but let me get uh, vinod sharma in on this vinod uh, there are two issues involved here one about the facts which have been brought about in the case whether they are facts or not second thing is about the about the newspaper deciding to publish the story itself as mr as air vice marshal kak was saying it could have been in page 9 not the way it was it it, it has been uh, played up you think what is what is your view on this so first of all let me say that uh, shekhar gupta has a formidable reputation as a journalist absolutely and especially uh, somebody who has been and, covering and the defense for yes, a long time and it is he wasn't uh, treading on grounds that he didn't uh, wasn't familiar about absolutely uh, uh, having said that uh, may i back to disagree with shekhar that uh, uh you know if uh, assuming that i had the story and i had the same facts and uh, uh and there were inferences to be drawn uh, maybe uh, i could have accepted uh, the call he took uh, had the story been other than page 9 on page 1 a good display on page 1 uh, i would have lived with it uh, because that wouldn't have caused the kind of sensation uh, 
right. uh, and the kind of concern that it has caused uh, on account of the full page display on page one. In fact, I was asking myself that, God forbid, had a coup actually happened, how would the display be? <laughs> Uh, frankly, so I think that well, there was, uh, but I will, uh, until I pass a final judgment, I will wait until tomorrow's edition of the Indian Express. No, I, uh, I, I want to, I want to, I want to bring to your notice that the, already the Indian Express has already issued a clarification. And, you know, to, just now, half an hour back, I think they're there. There, they have said that they, the Express stands by the report. They're standing by the report. They say that this investigation was done over six weeks' time. All the three whose bylines appear, four actually, whose bylines appear were involved in it. For six weeks they have been, and they claim that they have chosen, they have spoken to a whole lot of people who are directly and indirectly involved in these movements. So they have, they are standing by the story. They are not, they are not retracting. Uh, look, uh, of course, uh, when they uh, wrote the story and the kind of display they gave, uh, surely uh, there must have been some basis for it. Absolutely. They must have predicated their inferences on some facts that were at their disposal. Uh, but uh, as one uh, who doesn't uh, boast of being a security expert or a defense expert, may I um, share my layman's view to say that uh, a coup uh, in a country like ours is a near impossibility given the size and the expanse of our territory and also the variegated army that we have uh, for anybody uh, to, uh, to, to, to be that ambitious to stage a coup uh, with the help of two small formations. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we I know, think is... Know, I, don't uh, think, I don't think anybody would disagree with you because in, 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 in private conversations which all of us must have had over very, various times at various points of time with various kinds of people, this is, whenever we talk of Pakistan or any other country where such things happen, we always have felt that India is one country where this is, um, is a near impossibility. But, uh, General Kadyan, let us look at this report itself, a few, few points which have been raised there. One is that the Defense Secretary, who was in Malaysia, was asked, was asked to return immediately. Is this, isn't this, don't you, don't you see this as unusual? No, no. But that day, the army chief also filed his case in the Supreme Court. Absolutely. And the media only gave this headline, that he has been called back for consultation, ke how should the government respond to the court. Okay. So I don't think this event had ah. any relation to the defense secretary coming back from Malaysia. And this happened on the day the uh, army chief filed the petition Six, in the Supreme January. Court challenging about his date of birth issue. So the, the, the story seems to connect these two, uh, these two incidents. The general, file, general filing the case in the court and these two no, movements, my memory, movements, sir, it, movements it, of these two. If my memory serves me right, sir. Mm -hmm. The report that the uh, defense secretary has been called back from his foreign visit uh, happened in the daytime after we got to know that the army chief has moved the court. Yeah. So it was uh, on the on 16th daytime before sunset. And this incident, these movements seem to have happened on the night between 16th, 16th and, and 17th. 17th. So uh, the linkage, uh, you know, I wonder uh, whether the linkage is genuine uh, and on what basis the linkage has, the linkage has been drawn. No, yeah, it, 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 let, let General Kadi answer. Even if you examine the legal side of it, firstly, it was entirely a personal issue of VK Singh right. versus the government. It had nothing to do with the army. Right. Army, unfortunately, continues to get embroiled, occupy the front pages, recent past, but for wrong reasons. On 16th or 17th January, whenever we went to court, it was a non-event. After all, what was 16th January? The petition was submitted to the registry. Right. There was no hearing. Right. Uh, Air Marshal Kak, uh, you were you were trying no, to. No, no, no. The <coughs> the question is that it's uh, the sequence is like this. One point which the story doesn't address precisely as to at what point of time were the uh, the para para brigade units of Agra and the mechanized regiment from Hisar, at what time were they told to get back? It seems quite late in the day. And if that be the case, it ties in with the story about uh, the defense secretary having taken a flight from Malaysia sometimes right. in the midday. Right. And he has gone to office at midnight. He has informed the RM That's right. at midnight. That's right. The, the, the Prime Minister of and, India and, has, and been, has been informed. informed at the crack of dawn. Right. Nobody disturbs Nobody the Prime Minister. Nobody disturbs the Prime India. Minister. And, and also for the sake of a unit 
one mechanized uh, so regiment there, so there really? are so there it's are laughable. There, so Absolutely. there are there are doubts no, but about i think it. i think one point on which i i tend to disagree with my old friend vinod sharma is that it's army you know the, those kind of worst case scenarios uh, being forecast in india is not because you have a variegated army i'm sorry it's because you have an army which is so totally apolitical which is so clotswitzian in its dna absolutely so it's not a question let, let, because let, you let, have let, a variety of army it is the let impulse me quickly and the go dna go to, of the army which will not go to make it come out uday baskar uday baskar you heard this but my question is as uh, air marshal uh, kapil kak pointed out prime minister is not normally disturbed you know early in the early hours of the morning or late in the night and this seems to have happened and nobody seems to be denying this this aspect of it i think in all fairness girish this is a report which as you have just told us the indian express has reiterated that they stand by it right there are many gray areas right i said i was startled when i read it and as i read it a little more right. i spoke about the enormity of right. what had been reported right. and the way in which the i's were dotted and the t's crossed right i am hoping that in tomorrow's edition of the indian express right. some of the more crucial elements would either be refuted by the ministry of defense now i think this way in which the defense secretary's return has been linked with both the date of birth controversy and also now with the movement of two units right two battalions from agra and hisar in a way i think needs to be examined further so right. let's get these facts but i still maintain this point that even in the event this was true and many of the principal players are good friends of mine also absolutely. we respect the paper we respect the formidable quote unquote reputation of the editor in chief but i still maintain that the innuendos and the way in which various shall we say allegations were being made this is something that could have perhaps waited another day okay. and if the story is indeed true i would be the first to say that this needs very very detailed investigation and maybe a special session of parliament would Absolutely. have to be called Absolutely. but can we get our facts right and that only then i think we should really come to this as of now i still maintain the indian military's a political nature to my mind we will discuss this doubt. we will discuss this uh, uday yes. baskar uh, we need to get into a short break now please keep watching we'll be back very soon Welcome back. We are discussing the sensational news report in the Indian Express about the movement of two units of the army towards Delhi in January, and we are asking the question: Was it just a false alarm? Let me come to you, General Kadian. Indian Army is a political. It has always been a political. That has been one of the pride of this country. That you know, when when <coughs> all around us armies have played havoc with their nations, it is India's army which is. but in the recent past this difference of opinion between the army and the civilian government is isn't this something worrying uh, girish firstly as i said it is because of general vk singh as an individual that the issue has got highlighted right as an individual he had full legal right to go to the court right. whether he should have gone while still being the chief is a matter that can be debated but nobody can i mean deny him his constitutional right absolutely the very fact that he's gone to a court of india shows his confidence in the constitution of india so to no but it also shows his lack of confidence in the government to handle the issue no no but 16th was a non event in the legal terms as i am saying there was no hearing it was just given to the registrar that was the only level where the report could have gone in fact if he was more hurt it would have been on the last week of the summer when his complaint was rejected by right. the defense minister right and also let's realize january is a month when there is lot of movement of army units take I'm, place no, in no, delhi i am coming to that point general kadian Jan okay. january 15th was the army day yeah january 16th this has happened january 26th the republic day when all the uh, you know the major uh, lot of contingents are there in yeah, yeah, units yeah. are there in delhi yeah. 
and these two is it normal for this kind of movement to happen just 10 days before the republic day you know move, uh, units moving towards delhi when when Repub especially republic day is just 10 days there was a high level of security alert and all girish even if you go by the report it says that they wanted to practice the movement in a foggy condition right fog only occurs in january right this movement is totally unrelated to what was happening in delhi are you are you, you have you said that you have you have commanded yeah, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. this 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 exactly these two units apart from the other units which are associated with it. Is this a normal uh, practice that every year during the fox season, this kind of movements happen? Usual. It's up to the commander what you want to test them in. Is it an every year affair? It may be more than a year. After all, it has many units in SR. Right. It's only one of the units that was being exercised. Right. It is a common practice that they are moved at short notice. Even the unit is not told because if you want to test their procedures and drill, you shouldn't be giving them a warning. Right. So in the army, it's a non-event. I mean, it, it, it happens routinely. This is the first time it has got highlighted in the media. <coughs> right. Yeah we, yeah, we know. There's one question General Kadian and, and Marshal Kart may like to address. It is mentioned in the Express report that there were certain ground rules that were laid down post-1984 when certain uh, army pers personnel deserted their units in the wake of After Operation the, Blue Star. Yeah. I think it was the Sikh Light Infantry. Right. Uh, that, this, uh, that, that, that there were certain ground rules that were laid, and uh, this movement was in not in consonance Absolutely. with those ground rules. Now, may I ask that if a movement of this nature has to happen, at what level uh, is the army headquarters informed, and is there a mandatory provision that the MOD also has to be informed? Yes, army headquarters, the DGMO normally would share it with the Minister of Defence. Now, if that has not happened, that is the issue we should focus on. Absolutely. It's not such a big event that maybe even in the past, sometimes they would have, because it is a short notice move and a very small movement as for the army is concerned. If, if there is a mischief, assume theoretical scenario, yeah. why move only one unit? There's a full armored division sitting there. I mean, this is unthinkable what we are. No, I but mean, why, do, an army man, no, why do you, huh? so why do you think this, this, this lapse has happened that, you know, the information was not uh, provided to the MOD and also the uh, government, the other whoever others they need to be informed. Why do you think this has happened? No. Is it is, is the do you see it as yeah? Uh, Air Marshal Kag, you know you you you. I want you to bring you in. Do you think this could have been a simple lack, simple no, oversight? <coughs> no, it's not an oversight. I think some clarities need to be brought onto the public domain. Uh, I t take the viewers to 28th of May 1964 when Jawaharlal Nehru died. Absolutely. Uh, that time, In fact, General, the General report Chaudhary, mentions about that also. General Chaudhary, who was army chief that time, he moved two battalions from the, one of the divisions which was in Merit. Right. And that time, I mean, this background of, you know, neurosis goes back many decades. Right. The two battalions were asked to go back. Right. He was not going to do the C word. He was only bringing these two battalions because a pillar had fallen just in case there is a problem. Secondly, now look at the reverse, how reverse is, is so horribly unfortunate that people are being slaughtered in the streets of Delhi, yet neither the Home Minister of India, nor the Home Secretary, nor the Lieutenant Governor is in a position to get the army into Delhi in you're 1984 talking, at the time of Indira Gandhi's assassination. My third clarity is, as far as I know, General Kadiyan can correct me, there are no written instructions to the effect that no movement can take place towards Delhi, as far as I know. Yes, there is an informal understanding that movements towards Delhi during peacetime of army at a certain level, now that level is undefined, the informal understanding with MOD that this must be communicated to them. My fourth point is, now this again shows India in a poor light. Even if you have ascertained on the basis of the assurance, I'm talking about the political leadership, the problem is that institutions of the state thanks to this cross-sectoral responses because of the background of the date of birth, they are becoming a little suspicious of each other. It's very unfortunate that once a clarity has been given by no less a person than the DGMO to the political le leadership through the civil service executive, that these are routine Absolutely. movements. We will keep Why should they? Now, this is a key point, right. Girish, key point. Why should you send these little piddly units back? 
Excuse me. Why? Hey, that's a very important question. Commodore uh, Uday Baskar, you heard with the army. Air Vice Marshal. So you think if the if the units have been sent back, who has sent it back? Why were they sent back? Isn't the, are, isn't this a valid question which will need to be answered? No, no, there are many valid questions, Girish, and this is what I was saying, that there are many assertions that have been made in the Indian Express report. And if you read it carefully, I can think of 11 questions that need to be answered by both the Ministry of Defense right. and I hope the Indian Express as to how they have made these conclusions. Right. Now, I come back to this point about saying that is it true that the Defense Secretary had actually gone to his office at midnight right. and that he had made his consultation, apprised his political leader, the Defense Minister, right. and they actually came to a conclusion that these units have to be informed in the middle of the night or right. at whatever time to right. say turn back. Yes. And I fully agree with what Kapil Kak is saying that there is, I think, an inadequate civil military kind of texture at this point in time and these are issues that need to be visited because Absolutely. in the event that this entire reportage by the Indian Express is true, a number of questions will then emerge. Yes. That is it a fact that okay. today the MOD has okay. grave suspicion about the movement of one battalion of a para brigade yes. because it is carrying out a fog exercise? It calls into question lots of things. Absolutely. So my only are, submission yeah. is, let's wait till tomorrow. Absolutely. The defense minister made a statement in Vishakhapatnam. Right. I'm sure that the MOD will give us more details okay. on okay. this. Uh, and in the event the Express is standing by its story, Indian media is also, I think, going to go through a litmus test. Absolutely. And I think Absolutely. we are now it is a, at a it time. Is, it is as much. News, right. Right. So Uday Baskar, we are completely run out of time. Sorry. Uh, General Kadian, quickly, last words to you. Uh, you know, this is something which is, which is you know, okay, we, will, we all say that, you know, army is a political, but this is something which we should not, do you think we should take it lightly and just brush it aside? We can't do that, right? Girish, the army that I have known, the C word is not even thought about. No, no, Leave I'm, not talking, Leave I'm, not, I'm not even talking of the C word. Uh. I'm talking of the various questions which have been raised and they need answers. No, you are not talking about it, but the article does. Right. I mean, it leaves no doubt. Right. I think these things take place in small countries and there has to be a cause. Absolutely. There has to be political last, stability. Last words to Vinod Last I words to that, I think that there is a need to address the trust deficit. There right. is indeed a trust deficit that has developed lately between the civilian regime and the army establishment and uh, largely on account of uh, General uh, uh, V.K. Singh's certain actions uh, taken by him. Mm. I'm not going into passing a value judgment on that. But may I remind uh, my friend Admiral Ka Admiral Marshal Kak and uh, General Kadian that post Anwar Sadat, he was shot uh, during a National Day right. Parade. The, when uh, Republic Day Parade happened, I remember having reported as a young reporter that all the army units that participated in that were doubly searched Absolutely. in order to preclude the possibility, the possibility okay. of any, Vinod, Vinod, any foul play happening. We know we have completely run out of time. Sorry, General Kadian, I would have loved to give you the last word, but completely run out, uh, out of time. The question we had asked at the beginning of the program was, is it a false alarm? There, it, it may be a false alarm, but there, it has raised several questions which I think as a nation, we need to confront it and find answers. And as Commodore Uday Baskar rightly pointed out, this is also a litmus test for the Indian media, how, and how it will approach this issue in the coming days. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks to all my guests, Commodore Uday Baskar, Air Marshal Kak, Lieutenant General Kadian, and Vinod Sharma. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture.